morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Capistrano Valley. Welcome to our socially distant sanctuary, and hello to all the people on the interwebs out there. Uh, please join us in singing our opening number, Holy Holy Way, by Ricky Byers. today. So nice. So whoever you are, whatever spiritual path you're on, you are welcome here. We are all inclusive. We are a trans-denominational center and it doesn't matter what you did yesterday or what you're going to do tomorrow, you're still welcome here today. So, <laughs> but I don't want to hear about it, okay? <laughs> Just don't want to hear about it. So we're still socially distancing here, and we are still wearing our mask uh, inside the sanctuary. And um, so until we hear more, I mean, we we get all kinds of different, we all get all kinds of different uh, notices from different agencies. So we're in compliance, and I just want you all to feel comfortable and come back to our center because we are open. 
we are open and we're ready to receive each and every one of you here in our beautiful sanctuary. So we're going to start the service like we start every Sunday with our Flames of Faith. And we perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence that we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of, the, of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. And we light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Rick Dale lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. Let us pray. So in this most sacred and holy moment, we go within to the peace and the calm and the love that resides within each one of us. And while we are there, we recognize and we know that there truly is only one divine spirit, only one life, only one infinite intelligence, only one unconditional love. This energy and this vitality is the first cause to all of creation. It is the yang, it is the yang, it is timeless, spaceless. It is the all in all. And it's so beautiful because all these qualities of God, each and every quality of God, resides within each one of us. It's already there. It's already, it already exists. So we are here to bring it out, to express the love, to express the compassion and the kindness the understanding of spirit. That is our life's purpose, to be the light, to illuminate where there is darkness. That is our purpose. And so this morning I affirm that all is well, 
that each one of us is exactly where we need to be at this exact moment. And we are open to all the ideas and all the inspiration that Spirit sends to us. Because we are open at the top. We are beautiful spiritual beings having a fabulous and exciting human experience. And I, so, I know that this service is inspiring and is beautiful and is wonderful in each and every person. And that each person gleans the wisdom from beauty's beautiful music, from Dave's talk this morning, we grab on to that knowingness that we hear spirit speak. So we listen. We listen this morning with our spiritual ears. And then it goes deep within. And so I'm grateful. As I place my words into divine mind, my heart is full of gratitude for this teaching, for this center, for each and every person. And so I anchor this prayer in confidence, in joy, and in love. And if you agree with me, please say with me, and so it is. Okay, our affirmation this morning is really, I really like it. I've heard this said in many different ways, but this is our affirmation. Let's do it together. I have no big problems. I tell my problems about my big God, and so it is. <laughs> it's very cute. Okay, and our de declaration of principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it. And so it is. Okay, so our wonderful soloist this morning is our very own Wade Wooldridge. Please give him a warm Good morning. This is a song from the movie Yentl called Where Is It Written? And in the movie, Yentl is challenging God, saying she's unhappy with her lot in life as a Jewish woman and all the limitations that puts on her. But I think we can generalize that more to what are those limitations uh, from society, from our upbringing, or just from our own fears to say, so where is that written? <laughs> There's not a morning I begin without a thousand questions running through my mind That I don't try to find the reason and the logic in this world that God designed The reason why a bird was given wings If not to fly the sky with every song it sings. What's right or wrong where I belong within the Why have eyes that see and arms that reach Unless you're meant to know there's something more If not 
not to hunger for the meaning of it all and tell me what a soul is for why have the wings unless you're meant to fly and tell me please why have a mind if not to some emotion there. Thank you. It was beautiful. Okay. Um, you know, our month, our yearly theme for the centers for all the centers for spiritual living is timeless wisdom, evolutionary vision. And I love that. You know, we could just go anywhere with that, with, ev with evolutionary vis vision. So in the month of May, our topic, our theme is Holy, holy uprising. That's why uh, Ricky Byer's song is so perfect for, th for today. And today's topic is, this too is God? So our guest speaker is not a stranger to anyone. <laughs> he has been a practitioner here at our center for 10 years. He has just started his fifth career as a core energy life coach. He plays a mean piano, just beautiful, beautiful music, and he's excited to get, in, to get going out and starting to play at venues again out in the world. He's also a member of our board of trustees here of our, at our center, 
And today, he's also our Sunday speaker. Please give a very warm welcome to Dave Friedman. your party today. <laughs> so this too is God, huh? This is going to be fun. So let's get right to it. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Religion. Politics. Boom. <laughs> Top two things generally agreed on never to discuss at the dinner table. <laughs> Good thing we're not at the dinner table. So since we aren't, Maybe we'll talk about them today, because we're going to talk. We're going to talk about talking, okay? That's why this really touched my heart, because I really believe that some of these things need to be touched about. Science of mind principle number one. There is one infinite reality. We call it by many names, including but not limited to God, universe, spirit. How about all of those? Gus. <laughs> right? At our core, we are all Gus. Okay? So if we're truly to embrace this concept of oneness, then everybody is Gus. How you doing, Gus? How's it going, Gus? Come on, Gus. How are all you Gus's out there? So we got this. With this lens, then, it's really easy to see everybody as one, yes? But, or yes, and. I think it's the way it's supposed to go. Yes, and. We are all different versions of Gus, which makes life a lot more interesting. It's these other versions of ourselves, these human mirrors, if you will, that reflect back to us and give us opportunity for growth, or at least some awareness of parts of our inner truth. We may like some of what we see, others, you know, not so much. First of all, here we are. We are all Gus, agreed? Yeah. And so is everybody else, agreed? Yes. Well, then let's treat everybody like they're Gus. Secondly, variety is the spice of life. Everyone has their own opinions, and varieties of opinions is because, I don't know, just because. We've all heard, though, that no two snowflakes are the same. Who did that research? How do they really know? It is this variety that makes this such a great place to live and a tremendous palette in which to experience and to grow. Viva la différence. Think of us all as different facets of the same diamond. Besides, if we were all the same, most of us wouldn't be necessary. So the guidance I got from CSL today looks like this. So many taboo topics many of us will not touch. Each of them must also be God, right? No matter the political affiliation, sociological or cultural experiences, religious affiliation, so cultural experiences, religious, spiritual past, all of this is God. What could shift if we were to embrace and communicate courageously, openly and vulnerably about these things that many of us avoid? That's their theme. Here's my theme. Can we talk? Where did I get that? John, Who knows where I came from? Right. Can we talk? <laughs> and you know what she meant about that, right? She meant that can we have a conversation about stuff generally don't want to talk about. But today we're going to talk about talking. And we might talk about not talking. So since we're talking about what we're not talking about, we may be alluding to not talking about things that we're actually going to talk about. I may touch on something that could get under someone's skin. I don't mean anything by it. I really don't. But it does mean that we've touched on a place in you that may like a little bit of attention. Also, this is where we call an agreement number two. Anyone remember what that is? Don't take it personal. Right. So can we talk? Sure. Yeah, we can. We all know people that can go on for hours and hours and talk about anything, right? We also know people who can talk for hours about nothing. But can we listen? Because if there's no listening, there's no conversation. 
And I know I didn't say that, can we have a conversation? But in my mind, can we talk implies conversation. Can we talk implies that somebody's listening and somebody's talking. And then we switch in a perfect world. And then we go back and forth in exchange of ideas. St. Francis says, let us seek first to understand and then to be understood. It's a valid concept. And the connection is there, and that too is God. Our buddy Mark Nepo says there's 7,000 different ways to listen. That sounds overwhelming. Also, a couple of thousand of them are actually going to become extinct. But what he's referring to is there's 7,000 different languages on the planet. Due to the increasing commonality or homogenization of our language, among other things, like, I don't know, Starbucks on every corner, one might think it might make it easier for people to communicate. But just because we understand the words does not mean we understand what's behind them. We still have to listen, not only with our ears, but with our minds and with our hearts. I've identified a couple other languages. I've identified a couple of other languages. It seems lately that we have been exposed to languages of hate, languages of aggression, passive and otherwise, condescending language, languages that control and have power over another. And it feels to me that a lot of this may have to do with the anonymity of the internet, that these languages are proliferating. And I don't know if there's more hate and anger in the world right now, or if we're just aware of it. Awareness, though, is the first step to being able to do something about it. On the other side, the lighter, more positive, upbeat side, there are languages of love, compassion, trust, support, understanding, and others that come from the heart. These engender connection and lead to respect. They don't get enough press, but I know they're out there. Wouldn't it be nice if we spoke more often with those languages? You know, it probably wouldn't even matter what the words are. Here's a third one. Our inner language. The language with how we talk to ourselves. I believe we're all familiar with the chatterer who won't leave us alone. The roommate who judges and won't shut up. And their partner, the gremlin, who tells us all kinds of things about ourselves. They go by many names, and what they tell us about ourselves aren't always the most pleasant, uplifting things we want to hear. I'm sure, all right, I'm not sure, I'll just guess. I'm probably not the only one who, in a moment of frustration, has said things to myself that I wouldn't say to my friends or family. And why do we let ourselves get away with talk like that? We're supposed to love our neighbors as ourselves, right? And if we don't love ourselves, maybe that answers a couple of questions. My work takes me in and out of people's homes all the time. And in these various connections I've had, I've observed that many people don't want to share ideas. They want to give you their ideas. See, they know what they know, and they know what they want you to know, and then they tell you what they know, and then they move on. You know? <laughs> in Dave land, that's my world. I like to share ideas. <clears throat> you tell me your thoughts, I tell you mine. And we see where they line up. And we see where it's different. And then here we are, consciously creating connections. Actually, we're uncovering connections that are already there, which lead more to understanding. Remember, we are Gus. <laughs> and we need to work to get our humanness in line with our spiritualness. Spiritualness. You like that? I just made that up. So can we talk about what, though? Because it seems almost everything in today's overly PC climate has become so charged, there's almost nothing safe to talk about. They say we've never been as divided as we are today. Is that truth? Or is that perception? It doesn't matter. People's perception is their truth. Could it possibly be a lack of imagination that causes folks to be unable to take on a slightly different viewpoint? Or some might be saying, please don't challenge my beliefs. I know I haven't reasoned them out very well. They're very deeply set, and questioning my worldview would be very troubling. Besides, uses Frank Zappa, people will only agree with you if they already agree with you. 
We're not going to change anyone's mind. Some folks out there are extremely passionate about things like the government, for instance, the way the country is being run. They care deeply. But when I see that these very things that they care so much about makes them feel sad and mad, helpless, disconnected, I feel their pain. Half the people are angry at Biden for this, that, and the other thing. The other half are angry at Trump for this, that, and the other thing. We may not agree with what's going on, but we have to accept it as it is. And we have to realize that we are not victims. We get to choose how we feel and how we respond. And it is from this place of strength that we can decide what we want to do about it. Many see the world through a lens of fear. These political discussions get very heated. People are afraid of what they don't understand. They only know what the news decides to tell them, and it changes our energy, and not necessarily in a good way. Agitation sets in, name-calling starts, fear becomes front and center. I know, friends who aren't even fr I know folks who aren't even friends anymore because of a difference of opinion. Am I talking about this? Yes, I am, because this, too, is God. And what would God do about this? I'm guessing that whatever the situation is, it would be covered in love, compassion, and understanding. And God would stay in peace. There are reasons that life happens the way it does, and we don't always have access to the bigger picture. But it seems that everything always works out. Therefore, wouldn't it make sense that we were to uncover our compassion, our peace, love, and understanding for each other, while the machinations of the universal chaos go ahead and find its order? This too is God? You mean having a conversation with someone who completely disagrees with me? Is that God? Yes. Everything is God. Michael Beckwith says, in God awareness, problems dissolve because there are no real problems. There are only perfect patterns of existence and divine ideas. In a book I know a lot of you have already read, uh, Power Versus Force, with David Hawkins. I think we did a class here 35 years ago. <laughs> he uses a method of kinesiology to calibrate human consciousness and charted it from its lowest vibration, which he calls shame, to its highest, which is enlightenment. He determined that a higher consciousness radiates a beneficial and healing effect on the world. He used science to support, or prove if you will, that the, he's proved what the mystics have always known. Love is more powerful than hate, and the truth sets us free. As an example, he found that one individual who has raised their consciousness to this vibration or calibration, if you will, of 500, which is love, counterbalances the energy of 750,000 individuals who calibrated the lowest energy. All right, it's scientifically proven that by increasing your integrity, your understanding, and your capacity for compassion, you can change the world. We can do this. Thinking about that for a minute, I'd like to do, if you'd indulge me, a really quick little centering. So if you feel comfortable, sit up straight, feet on the floor, and if again, if you're comfortable, close your eyes. Picture yourself connected to a beautiful, white, warm beam of light coming in through your crown, coming down in through your crown, into your brain, through your head, into your body. Feel it in your heart. Feel your heart expand with this light. And in that warmness, I also want you to picture being grounded. There's another light coming up from the center of the earth, through your feet, through your legs, joining in your torso and at your heart. 
Feel those like radiating. Feel it emanating. You are connected. Now can you feel your heart open, radiating light? Feel it pushing back, pushing out towards past the confines of your body, out into the room. Feel yourself connected to the other lights in the room as your single energy becomes one. Expand your feeling out of the room. You're now radiating your energy. It's bigger than the building, bigger than the town. It's still you. It's your light pushing it out, pushing it out. Now feel your light, your connection, your love melding with all the other lights in the world. Feel that oneness with all. And sit in this for just a moment. When you're ready, feel yourself back into your body. Come back into the room. You don't have to let go of the light you're sharing, the light that you are. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Did you feel it? Did you feel that connection? We are one. That connection, that oneness, that gusness, if you will. That's what I call truth, with a capital T, truth. Eternal, universal, irrefutable, absolutely true, every step of the way, always. Everything else that we call truth or true are facts. They have variations, possible exceptions. They can change. That is known as truth with a little t. So you think maybe that being aware of the difference between big t truth and little t truth might put a different spin on our perceptions during some of these conversations. We can honor someone else's view, their opinion, their truth, because it's exactly what it is, a difference of opinion, their truth. And we can learn from that. We can understand more of what we didn't know, and that broadens our perspective. And we can accept that someone else has different thoughts, different opinions, and we can accept this person and yes, this too is God. From Ernest Holmes, never let anything cause you to doubt your ability to demonstrate the truth. Can we talk? Now that I've touched on politics. <laughs> Let's talk about religion. <laughs> When someone starts talking to you about religion, and if their view is diametrically opposed to yours, what goes on inside of you? Be honest now. <laughs> How does that make you feel? And can you actually identify your reaction, regardless of how subtle it may be? Do you try to tell them, gently of course, that they're wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Do you judge them? Maybe just a little? This is where I come face to face with practicing acceptance and non-judgment. I ask questions. I want to see if I can understand better where they're coming from. You know, if we're comfortable in our own skin and with our own beliefs, we don't need to change anyone's mind. Reminds me of a Lao Tzu quote, them that don't know, don't, them that don't know speak, them that speak don't know. Embracing that mindset will allow us to listen more deeply to what others have to say, hopefully in a less judgmental way. Just the other day I was involved in a conversation with a friend of mine who is, if it's in the Bible, then that's a truth kind of guy. And I realized after talking that he wasn't real completely clear as to why he held that position he did. It's just the way he was brought up. It's what he learned, and he's spouting those facts and beliefs to me. So over the, sense of, over the course of the conversation, 
I was asking him questions, and he was actually able to clarify his belief in his own mind, and he felt a lot stronger about his beliefs and more confident in the way he felt about it. I share this with you to show you that we may actually be doing folks a favor by helping them to get more solid in their position and how this type of conversation also generates more compassion and understanding. Our friend from San Diego, Deepak, reminds us, beliefs divide, values unite. And when we go to the values that underlie so many religious beliefs, they unite us. Personally, I feel very blessed to be participating in this particular philosophy, one that not only accepts all beliefs, but incorporates a little taste in all of those beliefs at its core. We actively touch on that every Sunday through the flames of faith. Best part of the service, actually, other than this. <laughs> I made up an acronym an acronym to help us stay conscious in a conversation to perpetuate understanding while we engage in the exchange of ideas. It's the word LAST. Listen, accept, share, trust. Listen. Listen with open ears and an open heart. Try and hear through the words to the truth of the person talking. Be present in this exact moment, to what is being said. Listen openly and without waiting for the next opportunity to speak your thoughts. I often forget what I wanted to say due to listening intently. I guess it wasn't that important in the first place. And if you have questions, ask. It shows the other person that you are listening. Accept what they say are their thoughts, their opinions, their viewpoint, and their way of seeing the world. No need for judgment. Just simply accept that what they say is what they feel is the truth for them at this time. Plus, when you acknowledge, there's another A thrown in, when you acknowledge what they've said, they feel heard. And then that leads to connection. Listen, accept, share. Share your thoughts, share your opinions, your viewpoints. Stay on the subject matter in front of you. Don't try to convince or coerce. Don't try to com just communicate and converse. Simply speak without energy, without attacking the person, and again, without judgment. Speak in the first person, share your thoughts, and then trust in the knowing that whatever the subject matter, universal truth is behind it all, and that this too is God. Trust that what we see, what we think, and what we hear is really our interpretation of their thoughts. You know there are three sides to every story, right? There's your side, there's my side, and then there's what really happened. <laughs> That's the trend with a capital T. Trust that the truth at the core of it all, even if you can't see it, but maybe you can feel it if you pay attention. Mm -hmm. Listen, accept, share, trust. Can we talk? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this week, I challenge us to work towards understanding others. Honor where positions differ. Work to stand together on common ground. Stay focused on the issues, respect the person. And I believe that during these open and honest conversations, seeds of understanding are planted on both sides. And it doesn't matter if they don't seem to take right away. Do you ever notice those seeds on the sidewalk? Sometimes they make their way to the cracks, and against all odds, they find a way to grow. In this way, the seeds of our ideas could find a way to grow together into a beautiful forest of peace, love, and understanding. A little corny, perhaps, but I'm okay with that. Can we talk? Please do.
sobre eso. Absolutely fantastic. I'm sure glad we have that recorded so I can go back and listen to it again and again. There was a lot of wisdom in his talk today. Let's give him another hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Boy, our practitioners should be so proud. <laughs> okay, and so now it's time to welcome back our beautiful soloist, Wade Wildridge. Uh, I'm going to be accompanied here by Gus, Gus, and Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the light at the end of the tunnel? Have you seen it? Yeah. Right? Just in the last few weeks, my vaccinations are all complete. I ate in a restaurant. Yeah. We played in a pickleball tournament yesterday. <laughs> we actually booked tickets to see theater later this year. Yay. Wow. We made some arrangements to go on vacation next year. There is light happening at the end of the tunnel. There's life happening, which is why we came up with this song to sing tonight, or today, whatever we are. Hey, your birthday's out there. No. Uh, and uh, if you, you'll probably recognize it at some point if you want to like hum along or sing along. Go ahead. <laughs> of you at home, if you'd like to make a uh, donation to our center, then you can send in a check or you can go to our website um, and pay through PayPal or credit card, however way you want. So let us take, say our, af our prosperity affirmation together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply. And it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all.
so much, Wade. And thank you, Wade and Kimberly and Reverend Karen and Rick Dale for leading us uh, in our music today. Appreciate that. And we want to thank Jules Vogel for standing in this morning. Thank you so much on piano. Uh, David Page, Bill Dixon, Ed Cusby, and our fabulous, remarkable, and spectacular band. Love you so much. In the back, we have Mary Brogdon, and we have Josh Kenner on uh, sound. And on camera this morning, we have Paul Kaminsky. So thank you so much, everyone, for putting this spectacular service together, because it's all here for you, and we just want it to be just perfect. So after service, you want to join us on Zoom for coffee and conversation, and there are three practitioners there. If you care to have a short uh, spiritual mind treatment, affirmative prayer with them, they put you in a breakout room. And those practitioners today are Jill Barnett, Cheryl Lyman, and Lorianne Witte. So if you would like to do that, just uh, log on to Zoom, and that will be um, right after the service starts. So I want to thank you again, Dave Freeman, for your wonderful talk. It was just very, very inspiring. That's exactly what we needed to hear. And now I would like to invite Reverend Karen, Rick Dale, up for our invitation. We got some for you. Next week, our speaker is Reverend Arpad Petras, who talk, whose talk will be Say Their Names. And today, 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 from 1230 to 2, we are having our workshop with Reverend Kath, and this is a healing workshop, so please avail yourself of this. It is available on Zoom, and the link is in your email, your weekly email. And because of that, we are um, not going to have Conscious Connection today. It will resume next week. That's right. This Tuesday, May 18th, we are hosting a live stream blood bank blood drive in the sanctuary. This is from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can call and make an appointment or just show up. There's information on the poster located on the kiosk in the back of the room. Bring your blood. <laughs> Okay, Wednesday mornings, 10.30 to 12.30, we have our book club with Mary. The book under discussion right now is See No Stranger by Valerie Carr. And on Thursday mornings from 10.30 to 12.30, Shifting Sands, our educational discussion group uh, focusing on new thought topics meets. And on Friday mornings at 8 a.m., uh, Coming Home, Awakening to Spirit, a group setting for increased awareness of the beauty of our oneness with life meets. And also, on Friday evenings at 5 p.m., we have Happy Hour, hosted by Pam Rock. And this is where you can interact with your spiritual family in a very casual Zoom setting with no agenda. You don't even have to wear pants. All of these meetings are accessible <laughs> via Zoom, and the links are available in your weekly email. And I think that is it. So if you all want to stand, we're going to do our closing song called Stand. <laughs> Share it, spread it, and so it is. And so it is.